Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Okay, a bit of a different start to usual, but I thought I'd come on camera and say hello, show off my new Egypt football shirt and tell you about the video. This week I got a new book by Cole Cromer. It's his 1978 excavation report of the Cromer dump. It's a really hard book to find. There's not a PDF on the internet and I had to have the book shipped from France. I've scanned in every single page, tried to translate it, and it really is a fantastic read. Of all the great finds documented inside, some controversial, some not so, there was this, a picture of a sphinx. This sphinx was found inside the dump, but it's got no pharaonic headdress, it's got no beard, and well, it's out of place. So I'm looking into it, wondering what it could be. How old could it be? What is it showing? Watch the video, enjoy, and please do leave a comment. Thank you. I've recently made two videos on the Chroma Dump, an obscure but important feature of the Giza Plateau, a crescent-shaped ancient trash heap located to the south of the Giza Pyramids. It was first excavated in the 1970s by Carl Chroma, and then again to a lesser extent in 2018 this time by the Ancient Egypt Research Associates, or AERA for short. Experts agree the dump was created in the 4th dynasty of the Old Kingdom, and that certainly seems to be the case. And whilst it does contain a variety of finds from the reigns of Khufu and Khafre, the 1970s lead archaeologist Carl Cromer believed the dump also contained earlier finds from dynasties 1 to 3. Clay ceiling expert Mera Torsia Regalo would go on to analyse some of the finds and also agreed. There was also evidence for possible pre dynastic activity, as seen in the decoration on some of the pot shards. In his 1972 publication, Cromer wrote, quote, After the results of the first excavation, I would therefore like to suggest the following interpretation of the discovery as the most probable. There was an extensive settlement on the site of today's Pyramid District of Giza. The life of the settlement probably extended from the 1st Dynasty to the 3rd Dynasty. At the beginning of the 4th Dynasty, the rock plateau on which the settlement was located was declared a burial precinct, and the settlement was demolished. End quote. As stated in my last video on this subject, this is a history of Giza that isn't mentioned today. I don't hear many or any Egyptologists talking about the possible existence of an extensive early dynastic settlement on the plateau, one that predates the pyramids. We know from the finding of pottery in a number of locations at Giza that the pre-dynastic Madi culture did occupy the plateau, to what extent we can't know. There are also high status early dynastic tombs just south of the main pyramid field, so Chroma claiming to find archaeology that predates the pyramids really is not too controversial. In 2018, decades after the original excavations, the AERA dug two trenches into the Chroma dump and apparently found no evidence of anything before the reign of Khafre in the 4th dynasty, the builder of the second pyramid. The archaeologists referred to it as a 4th dynasty demolition and trash heap, with the earliest dump material being consistent with a demolished 4th dynasty royal rest house or small palace. But what I found strange about the AERA publications is that there was no mention of Cromer's early dynastic finds, and whether or not they had been re-examined. Cromer's interpretations of these finds were not debated or debunked, They've just been, well, ignored. It's like Cromer's finds and his associated interpretations have been swept under the rug. But why? What exactly did he find? Cromer's 1978 excavation report is often quoted, but today it's out of print and there is no PDF copy on the internet. It's nearly 50 years old and close to being lost to obscurity buried in university libraries with its information out of reach to the layperson. 
I found a hard copy listed on the Austrian Academy of Sciences website, but sadly it was out of stock. I eventually found it in the brilliant French bookshop, Merit Seeger Books, and it arrived last week. It really is a fantastic, detailed 170-page publication on the Chroma Dump, packed with details, photographs, drawings, cross-sections and interpretations. I've had to scan each page and translate the German to English. A long and laborious job, but it was certainly worth the effort, because there is information in this book that should not be forgotten. Finds that should not be swept under the rug, because they have the potential to change everything we thought we knew about the origins of the Giza Plateau. In a forthcoming video, I'll detail all the finds from the dump that Cromer interpreted as possibly or quite clearly pre 4th dynasty. Because in this video, I really just want to focus on one object in particular. According to Cromer, this is the oldest Sphinx statuette ever discovered in Egypt. And by Sphinx, I mean the body of a lion and the head of a human. Of course, we now know there is also a Sphinx from the reign of Jodefre, showing the head of Queen Hetaperes II. And this head of Jodefre is also thought to belong to a Sphinx. But what if Cromer is right about this strange little statue? It was found in Trench F of Cromer's excavations. It's only 3.6cm in length and it's made from unburnt mud. The eyes are deeply depressed as triangles and the eyeballs and the pupil are recognisable. The nose protrudes prominently and the mouth is very wide and extends as a deep oblique notch over both cheeks. The lips look well defined, giving the small statuette a peculiar expression. Compared to a conventional sphinx, the legs have a somewhat shortened form, and the back legs almost look to be stuck on the sides, and of course they do look anatomically incorrect. The front legs clearly show lion paws, but are short and close together. The paws and toes are parallel on the ground, just like other Sphinx lion depictions. Cromer says the tail is a short button like stub, but from this picture I think it looks to curve around to the right, just like the Great Sphinx. There are some scratches on the shoulder and abdomen, but generally speaking the object is in fine condition for its age. But how old is it? Well, Unlike the majority of Sphinx statues found in Egypt, this one has no pharaonic headdress. It instead has a very detailed and distinctive hairstyle, with individual curls arranged in concentric circles. According to Cromer, this is characteristic of the Old Kingdom, although we should say we do have a lack of understanding of hairstyles from earlier times. Furthermore, the trench where the statuette was discovered also had a large number of clay ceilings from the reign of Khafre. This, together with the fact that Cromer believed the Great Sphinx was the work of Khafre, means that he believed the small mud statuette dates to the same time, the reign of Khafre. Cromer notes the popularity of Sphinx statues in the New Kingdom, how they were popular symbols for the kings, with every single 18th dynasty pharaoh having a Sphinx depiction with their own face on the body of a lion. Miniature Sphinxes were also used as votive offerings, including this selection discovered by the great Selim Hassan in the Sphinx enclosure. These date to the New Kingdom, were made of limestone and were also painted red. But all of these examples have a royal headdress, just like the Great Sphinx. So, why is this one different? Although you can argue that this Sphinx statuette is crudely made, clearly a lot of work did go into the hair. There is a conscious decision not to have the pharaonic headdress, indicating this may not be a representation of a king. But if the Great Sphinx was newly carved, or even if the head of the Grand Monument was recarved by Khafre, would someone be brave enough to make their own statue and not portray the king? I don't know, but it does seem quite strange. But maybe this is Khafre, 
and it's just a crude representation without his royal regalia and his beard. So if any viewers know of any other Old Kingdom Sphinx statues that look like this, please do get in touch because I've not seen one quite like this before, and one that comes from an important royal necropolis like Giza. But if it's not Khafre, what could it be portraying? As I've mentioned in previous videos, I do have a working hypothesis the Sphinx is portrayed on the Norma palette, an object that dates back to the very beginning of dynastic history. So, although highly contentious and debatable, my hypothesis is that the pharaonic head we see on the Sphinx today was recarved out of another head, the original one as seen on the Norma palette, which could well be the handiwork of the Madi culture of the pre-dynastic north, the people that Norma defeated. There is only one other depiction of this strange composite image as seen on the Norma palette and it's on an object called the Metropolitan Museum Knife Handle, also dating to the beginning of dynastic history, and it looks to show the enslavement or capturing of people from the north. And then I saw this, and so I do wonder if this small statuette is another piece of the puzzle. Could it be a pre-4th dynasty depiction of the Great Sphinx? Is this a pre-dynastic or early dynastic votive offering, created before the head was recarved in the 4th dynasty? Is this small figurine a rare and unique artefact, the only one of its kind showing the original form? It would explain the lack of pharaonic headdress. Furthermore, it's found inside a dump containing not just 4th dynasty artefacts, but objects also from the earlier dynasties, and maybe also pre-dynastic. Of course it is purely speculative, and there is a strong argument that it is a 4th dynasty statuette. It was found in Trench F, and, as stated, in this trench there was a large concentration of clay ceilings from the reign of Khafre, 9 in total. There were also the remains of what looked like a 4th dynasty royal rest house, and also 4th dynasty pottery. But whilst Cromer believed the dump was created in the 4th dynasty, he also believed the finds inside the dump come from a settlement close to the pyramids that was active much earlier, and ended at the end of the reign of Khafre. Ceramic pieces show strong echoes of scratch marks seen in pottery from both pre-dynastic Nakeda II and early dynastic cultures. Stone knives, and objects like these fishing hooks and triangular scrapers, also hark back to an earlier time. But according to Cromer himself, these specific objects can't be used as proof for an early dynastic or pre-dynastic settlement, because they do occur almost unchanged into the Old Kingdom. They could be pre-dynastic or early dynastic, but we can't know for sure. But then we have a number of clay ceilings that display animal figures, and a rolling seal made of wood, that Cromer firmly dates to the Thinite period, aka the early dynastic. Five of these early ceilings were also found in Trench F, the same trench as the Sphinx statuette. These seal prints from the Cromer dump are also possibly 3rd dynasty, or maybe even earlier, and are representing the union between Upper and Lower Egypt, or as Cromer says, receiving the South and the North. And in Cromer's own words, they also testify that the settlement had a special meaning during this time. Cromer believed the now long lost Giza settlement had a special value in the celebrations of the union between the north and the south of the country, maybe an annual festival that was held at Giza from the early dynastic period and into the Old Kingdom, maybe due to its location near Memphis because it's close to a possibly overthrown Madi culture settlement, and also because it's on the border between Upper and Lower Egypt. Cromer also found faience tiles in the dump, which he says are diagnostic of a 3rd dynasty royal building, the same type of tiles we find in the southern tomb of Djoser, again attesting to Giza's early origins. 
I'll go into all of this in more detail in a forthcoming video, because there really is a lot more to say. For now, I want to go back to the Sphinx. I showed in recent videos how there is physical evidence the cutting of the Sphinx enclosure does predate the 4th dynasty. We know there has been pre dynastic pottery found in more than one location at Giza, and there are early dynastic tombs to the south of the pyramids. And now we have the Chroma Dump, with evidence suggesting there was a settlement in the vicinity of the pyramids. One that was active from at least the very beginning of dynastic history and ended at the end of Khafre's reign. The ruined architecture, various artifacts, tools, pottery, and so on were all dumped right here at the Chroma Dump. The Sphinx statuette was found inside the dump, a Sphinx that has a very distinctive face, has no pharaonic headdress, and there is no clear association to any king and I believe that's because it could be a model of the original Sphinx. I believe it's possible the head of the Great Sphinx was recut in the 4th dynasty, whether by Khufu or Khafre, but originally, the Great Monument had the head of a god, one that was worshipped in this region, a god that was sacred to the pre-dynastic Madi culture, and one that could have been absorbed into the ancient Egyptian pantheon when the country was unified. But of course, this hypothesis is really just one possible option, the other being that the Sphinx was a lioness, as shown in great detail by researcher Robert Nayland. The lioness hypothesis is the most popular, and it does have the most supporting evidence, but I'm going to keep exploring this option as much as possible, because it's good to be thorough and keep an open mind. Whether it's correct or not, one thing is for sure, the Chroma Dump looks to contain key evidence of an ancient settlement of Giza, one that existed before any pyramid was built. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.